Good afternoon, comrade subscribers. Thanks for hanging around. Hope everyone's well. Another humid weekend here. A uh, little bit of yard mode yesterday, and then it uh, rained yesterday, last night, yesterday afternoon. So that was a nice bit, bit of a cool change, which is good. But of course, it meant today when the sun came out, it was quite humid. So let's look on the uh, the Wonsons Electricity House uh, thermometer gauge, and we're up to it's probably what time is it now? It's, I think it's coming up to six p.m. And it's about what's that? 27, 27 degrees. So yeah, still a still a bit warm. But yeah, I wanted to have a look, another look at the uh, Texas Instruments CC40 uh, Compact Computer 40. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on this one, mainly trying to repair the display. Uh, this one, uh, big thanks to longtime subscriber and commenter, Mr. Valkman, uh, who donated this to me, uh, new in box. So I don't have any stress or worry about trying to get it to work. Um, the other two that I've, I've, I've bought when they've come up, um, basically batteries have been left in which has caused a lot of corrosion, which in turn causes the screen not to work. So um, some of the work I have been doing on these other ones is trying to... So you have an LCD here, which unfortunately is cracked, so it's not going to really work too well. But I don't know if you can actually see it. I probably showed it. Um, just trying to show the little... I'm looking... Where, where, where are you? you can probably maybe see it. Anyway, you can see there are lines there. So they match up with the, with the zebra strip here. So the zebra strip goes on there, which then connects to the PCB, and that's how the signal gets transferred to the LCD. Anyway, so I tried to get some new... I wanted to get some new um, zebra strips. Um, so a company called Fuji Poly, I think, Fuji Poly America. Uh, you could get samples. Never got any. So I'm on their emailing list, so they definitely got my details. Uh, so I'm going to have to chase that up, because it would be nice to know exactly what what would work. But that's basically the issue with getting non-new old, uh, new old stock, uh, is if someone's left, left the batteries in. So I wanted to have a quick look at this. Um, I've got some software on ROM. Software comes on ROM and I've got one of the peripherals. So the big thing that, that kind of <laughs> kind of made the CC40 a bit useless is, you can have a look on the back here, is that it was supposed to come with a wafer, wafer tape, but that, that, uh, that was never released. I have seen videos, uh, people actually do have, have uh, pre-release ones or test ones or something like that. Um, but yeah, so that was never, never became available. Um, there is a printer plotter. I don't know if I've ever seen one. Maybe there has been for sale. I don't know. Uh, but I grabbed the modem mainly to get the cable. So the interface it uses, they call it um, Docbus. So on oh no, a Hexbus, Hexbus, I'm thinking of the TI-74. Um, so it uses Hexbus, which is a eight pin <laughs> um, interface. Naturally, that's why it's called Hexbus. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, so, so it's interesting, it's interesting. I think the, the TI-74 calculator, uh, just TI-74 basic calc, I think came out afterwards, same time, but I think it was more successful. It's, um, do I have battery? No, I don't have battery. Oh yeah, I do have batteries in here. Pretty much the same sort of screen, as you can see. Um, also has cartridges, but I think these were more successful. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Let's, um, let's open this up. All right, let's open it up. So again, big thanks to Mr. Volkman for donating this to me. I really do appreciate it, even though it's taken me ages to get to it. So as most of my long-time subscribers will know, I, I don't do videos, you know, this is the history of whatever. You know, there's much better YouTubers um, who, who do much more interesting videos than me about that sort of stuff. Um, my videos are more like trying to look at maybe obscure computers or rarer computers that you may not have heard of and you know maybe you get interested in, in getting one so the idea is that okay this is what you can expect basically pulling it apart does it work 
or does it not work? <laughs> so anyway, so the thing with the CC40s is my, the, the two that I've bought um, used, they've had leaky batteries. Um, this one's new in the box, no problem. So yeah, so it runs basic, which is pretty cool. Um, so we've got quick reference guide, got the user's guide, which is pretty thick, basically covering all the basic commands. Um, a few other bits and pieces I need to worry about. There's the computer itself. I don't think we'll worry about these. So let's get the fellow out. So as I was saying, so I think that the, the TI-74 and, well, not so much the TI-95 ProCat because that's kind of a different machine, but the, um, I think the 74, well, don't quote me, but it was certainly more more successful. Um, it also takes cartridges on the side there, and it's also single line display. I think it runs the same basic. Different port, though, which we'll have a look at. Well, we're going to have a look, quick look now. So that's that one. So that was the hex, hex bus. And on here we've got the dock bus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pins. So we've got a ten pin dock bus on there versus the eight hex bus there. But um, also takes cartridges. So we've got statistics cartridge here. Uh, also RAM and stuff like that. I've already got batteries in the CC40. So we can power it on, turn the on button. Um, when I said it runs basic, we've got an overlay here, which is, uh, I think, basic commands. Nice and easy to lose. And interestingly, I'm going to compare it to the 74. Same sort of display. So we can do a basic program. 10... Now what are these? So how do I get those special commands in? Is it control? No. No. Don't know. Doesn't matter. 10 prints. Oh, sweating buckets. And then 20, 20, 10. And we can list it, and we can use the um, cursor keys on the side here, just adjust the backlight, and go through it like that. Run, we can press the run button on the side here. Test, 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 break. There we go. So, but we can also do cartridges. So yeah, so, bit, it's an, it would have been good back in the day um, if you just have this, have your cartridge. For example, like I did a batch of um, electrical and electronic engineering. So having something like this would have been awesome, you know. Because um, back then, you know, laptops were massive 8088 sort of things. Let's just zoom out a bit. So here's, here's the cartridge. Whoop, like that. Um, don't I think over yeah so an overlay would come in here not in this case so what have, what have I got I've got advanced electrical engineering I've got memo processor which is what you'd use the modem with and I've got finance exciting stuff so take that off oh power off obviously power off insert the cartridge right way round <laughs> and push it in just got to go in there we go it's in nicely put the cover back on and there we go so power on now i know you type run oh, it's got continuous memory doesn't it so if we do list it remembers my program so for simple programs, that's pretty cool, but obviously if you've got a complex program, you want to be able to save it. <laughs> so you still need that sort of saving stuff. So anyway, 
let's load the can I do I need a space there there we go electrical engineering library sorry let's get that light use printer no and then we go through with the cursors on the side all the different uh, programs so Bode, Nuquist, Roots of Polynomial, uh, Discrete Fourier Transform, Network Analysis, Passive Low Pass Filters, PLLs, Series, Parallel Conversion, Signal Detection. Um, I think I vaguely remember what that was, Exit Program. So yeah, nothing, nothing too exciting there. Um, there is, all of the ROMs have been dumped uh, onto, I think, I think it fits on a four megabit, 4, 512 kilobyte, four megabit uh, EEPROM. Problem is my dodgy Chinese EEPROM programmer keeps restarting the computer trying to program it. So I couldn't program the whole thing. So where'd my EEPROM go? So I've just programmed 132k EEPROM. And let's see if I can get it to work. I don't know about that. So this is just game, so I don't know what's on here. But um, yeah, let me push this on. So I think this is from yeah Retro Innovations. They also made these um, converter boards, which go from hex bus to dock bus, so you can interface. CC40 with um, a TI-74 or something else using DocBus. But let's see. Okay, I've got all the things down. Let's see if I can get this to work. Um, close in like that. Power on. Power on. Oh, doesn't like that. I wonder if I have to make some other changes to it. Or maybe I should make, read the instructions. Mm, okay, unfortunately that's not going to work today. I have to read the instructions or try and get that 4 megabit working. Sorry, I'm just sweating buckets at the moment. It's very hard to, very hard to concentrate and think when you've got sweat dripping off your nose. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, picture. Yes, yeah, so that's working. All right, so I'm going to have to look into this. Um, I'm not sure what I've done wrong. There are some other ones. Yeah. All right. Uh, what else was I going to show you quickly in this first video? Um, we've looked at the ROM software. Oh, I do have a modem. I do have the modem. The reason for buying the modem is to get the hex bus, hex bus um, cable. So you can see here. Um, yeah, and actually, someone there is a there is a, video, a YouTube. Someone has actually used this, and the memo processor used the memo processor with this to actually dial in and uh, connect to BBS and things like that. So I'll have a quick look at this one. It's the manual. There's the modem itself. Pretty simple, pretty lightweight. On off. Got your two hex bus so you can chain them. Um, batteries again. <laughs> yeah, I might throw those away. Interestingly, just plain AA batteries, nothing obscure like HP stuff. Um, and then you've got your hex bus cable here. So it basically just plugs in like that pretty simply. Let's put that back in there for now. It's actually not very long. So it's going to have to sit on this side, I reckon. Like, like so. That's not very long at all compared to the picture. Which picture do we want to look at? Mm, looks a bit longer there, but um, I guess that's okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I've got the cable, so I can hopefully 
just make up a little dock convert uh, dock bus converter there and maybe talk to a ti-74 or um because i think there was a cassette interface for the ti-74 and i think someone may have done an sd interface so using that you can get around the lack of storage on this by using um using a dock bus peripheral i think that was the idea i think that was all for now um i'm gonna say it was just a a quick look at this I've been meaning to get to it for a while. Um, yeah, with all these single-line handheld computers, you think, well, what good are they in this day and age? It's like, well, you know, if you're hardcore, you can do your single-line stuff and put up with it. The best thing I can think of is is like a chess program. If you wanted to try and develop a ch your own chess program, a single-line display is all you really need. So, but yeah, I'm going to try and get some more stuff up and running so get that working try and get the, <laughs> the multiple eproms working um yeah and um see how we go okay that's it for now i am going to cool off somewhere bye for now